Hey y'all, what's good? Good morning, headed to work. But anyway, I enjoyed the live with y'all last night. Uh, ooh, excuse me, talking to y'all, doing my nails. Same old thing, just a different day. You know how we do when we play, how we play. <laughs> That's a rap lyric. And I didn't even end up doing no rap last night. You know, I had somebody on there that would have known what I was talking about. But yeah, I enjoyed time with y'all as usual. And I'm so proud we got off of there at a reasonable time, even though I still didn't go to bed. So, oh, there's a doggy in the street. Poor doggy. Um, even though I didn't get, get to bed, so shoot, probably after midnight, but it was still better than being down there with y'all for you know forever ever k and f did a video where she oh lord y'all y'all know anytime i say that, that word or p-i-c-t-u-r-e this thing in my car i'll start you know it'll listen but one of the things she she i can't remember the name of the video but i had put kind of a public service announcement in there telling women who are new to dating out that if you're gonna date out and you're dating non Tyrone who are Tyrone adjacent um, you're gonna get the same result so don't date out expecting you know different results if you're gonna be dating men who like worship Tyrone so I you know I never date out if, if, if a man that I'm dating uh, has a bunch of Tyrone friends or know too much about the culture know the music know the everything you know he got tyrone friends yeah he gonna treat you just as bad as a tyrone would so it's like i feel like y'all know that but sometimes every now and then i'll hear one of y'all say you know you want somebody that has swag or you know all this kind of stuff and uh, somebody said it so eloquently that swag don't pay the bills it's like you're getting out of black stand for a reason there's a reason you're not dating you know a tyrone if you're going to get with a man that is problematical why why are you dating now you know uh and the, the video that she did was talking about dating out um and she, you know she was reading some issues that people had written in about about basically they had dated out uh, but whoever they had dated had problems just like you know basically the guy was too black or Jason or whatever and I was like, well, duh, why are you dating somebody black or Jason? If I'm dating a, a white man, I want a white, white man. If I'm dating a, a Latino man, well, whoever I'm dating, they can't be too close to Tyrone in any way. Like, I, you know, I literally, I remember telling y'all about the, the dude that I just stopped dating this year. You know, I remember him asking me about music I liked. And he was like, you know, do you like rock? And I was like, what's rock? You know, <laughs> and he was on my rap music, you know, just... He, you know, I, I'll see these kind of litmus tests, you know, for Blackistan where people be like, ask a guy how he feels about, you know, Megan Thee Stallion and Ty Daystar. I can't even think of the man's name. I, I just know his real name is Daystar, the guy that shot her. Ask him how he feels about that. And I'm like, what are these Blackistan questions? I don't date anybody who even knows who that Daystar fella is. Like, they don't even know you know they might know jay-z or something like that but they don't listen to rock you know they don't know what <laughs> what's current you know um we had also talked about conflict resolution last night we talked about kind of the attitudes that you might have in blackistan that you can't take over into dating outside of blackistan i mean you can take them over but it's not gonna bode well for you i wanted to talk about that a little bit more and y'all okay so my, I don't want to say my obsession, but kind of my love of discussing conflict resol resolution is because I've been so wonderfully bad at it. Um, I've been one of those people that resolved conflict with violence and it's ruined my life. And so now I've had to learn how to resolve conflict other ways. You know what I mean? <sighs> Um, I was listening to a, I don't know how many of you guys listen to Frank James. I share his videos sometimes. They're about the, the 16 personalities. And I listened to a video and I'm, I might try to link it below here. Or I'll share it on the community wall or something. But a video that he did where he talked about different leadership styles and, you know, what kind of leadership style fit what, you know, fits what personality type. And when I listened to it, the leadership style that, um, 
fits my type was, um, I think it was Democratic. And it said that one of the strong points of people with that leadership style is conflict resolution. And it's weird because I feel like in a workplace, I can resolve conflict, you know what I mean? Or in a, not even necessarily a workplace, um, you know, in, in any type of familial situation or whatever. I'm also a person though that I feel like I'm quick to apologize if I've done something wrong. You know, I'm quick to say I was wrong about something and to ask someone to please forgive me. You know what I mean? Um, and it seems like in, in Blackistan, and we've talked about this before, that when it comes to resolving conflict, we seem to know how to do it in certain situations. So at work, you know, we put on this mask that we call professionalism and we're getting paid to perform, you know, a role or a task. And so we know how to resolve conflict at work. We mind our business. We don't get saucy. We sure ain't going to threaten anybody with violence, you know. Now, y'all, when I worked at the funeral home, babe, it was so many different people got fired for resolving conflict violently. I, I, and I've shared some of those stories with y'all in, um, you know, funeral chronicles. I've told y'all about the literally the fights there that, you know, among employees just... And then, you know, it used to be that the employees could stay hired on, but as, you know, society got more litigious, those employees have to end up being fired because, you know, you, you can't keep them around if they're gonna be beating people up when they disagree with them. And that's something I learned working at a black company is a, a black company headed by a Tyrone that has moral issues is everything gotta come down to a, you know, do you wanna fight? Like, it, it's just like, what? <laughs> Or people not speaking to each other. People come in the office and not speak and all this. And remember I told you guys, I even the, the lady who was the mistress of the owner, she and I used to be really close friends. You know, when I talked to her, when she got back in contact with me recently, I told her, you know, I apologize for how I treated you when we worked there. That place was so toxic and I was not the best me I could be working there. And I didn't even, I mean, I knew it was toxic, but I didn't see how bad it was until I started working at a normal place again. You know, around white people that just go to work and do their job, you know, you're not, just all the stuff that we had to deal with there, you know. And she was like, exactly, like she, you know, basically she realized the same thing when she left there, that it was just so toxic, you know. Working a normal job, you just forget how freeing it is to just go to work, do your job, come home, and that's it. Not, you know, you, you going home crying every night because you don't got cussed out or whatever, you know. Um... We, you know, Mocha Mommy brought up something in that conflict resolution conversation. She said, it's easy to resolve conflict or it's easier or it's more challenging. Let's put it this way. It's more challenging to resolve conflict when you have to see the person again, when you have to continue to interact with them. And I told her, you know, it to me, it's a hallmark of maturity. If you can resolve conflict with people, you have to see again. So yeah, you can cut off people and say, oh, I'm never speaking to, the, to them again. And you never have to see them again, you know? But it to me, it takes real spiritual maturity uh, to say, you know, you're gonna have to see this person again and how are you gonna handle it when you do see them? That to me is what takes maturity and grace, you know? That even if you disagree with someone, even if you've seen the worst side of them, even if they're not who you thought they were, you know, how can you still interact with them without being problematical? You know what I mean? Um, and I, that was a decision I had to make with that, with the situation with the family reunion. It's like, I had, I, and y'all, y'all know I tried and I tried and I tried. I had to go through little mental and metaphysical flips in my brain to try to get over this situation with a couple of family members for the greater good of the everyone else that I love. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't, you know how they say one monkey don't stop no show. It's like, I, I literally had to say, cat, you know, like, just think if you never went anywhere where you felt unwelcome, you, you wouldn't get out of bed every day. like. You know, literally as humans, not not to mention as black humans, we're, there's always somewhere where you're gonna be made to feel unwelcome, whether it's because you're a woman or because you're dark skinned or because you're fat or because you're not attractive or because 
you are smarter because you're not a baby mom or because you are a baby mom. Whatever it is that your things are that make you unwelcome in certain circles, if you dodged everywhere where someone didn't want you or where someone made you feel uncomfortable or told you it would be better if you didn't go, you know, if you didn't go any of those places, you wouldn't go anywhere in life, you know? And so it to me, it's a part of growing up when you say, I have to be around, you know, people that I don't necessarily see eye to eye with or I don't agree with their moral standard or their lack of empathy or whatever. But for the greater good of whatever, whether it's my familial relationships or whatever, I have to be around these people and I have to be cordial in doing so. And <clears throat> one of the things I want to talk about too, you, you guys, I um, shared on the community page, there was a a black woman who was doing a reaction video and it came up in my suggestions and I shared it. it now y'all know I'm not on TV or anything. So when things are going on in the world, the only way I typically know about them is if someone messages me to tell me about it or if I see it on YouTube. But there was a situation with a Karen at a Dunkin Donuts and she was acting a fool. And so this black woman did a response video of different people saying what they would have done in the situation or what they didn't like about how the situation was handled. And I literally put in the comments something like, or in the title when I shared it, you know, she wouldn't have did that at Popeyes with a Shaniqua, you know? And we have seen a few videos where a Karen like that, that's, you know, obviously uh, don't like people of darker hues has said something crazy and got body slammed and, and killed talking crazy to a Shaniqua or a Tyrone like they crazy you know what I mean and I've worked in retail before now I don't think I've ever well no that's not true when I worked in retail banking I had to go out to and I think I've shared this story with you guys before but I had to go out to a branch um in a rural part of town that did not like black people um I didn't know it at the time though because there's I only knew of one particular branch or two where black people weren't welcome. Uh, and y'all, I was in my early 20s, you know, early 20s, like right out of college. I was still a floater. Like at that point, I hadn't even gotten my own branch yet. So I'm talking 21, maybe 22 years old, right out of college, still super fresh, you know. And this old white man comes in there and sees me and I'm the brownest thing in there and tell me, what's her kind doing in here? And everybody just kind of looked around and I immediately uh, called whoever was the, the the senior VP over retail was like, um, this just happened? Uh, what, what are we gonna do now? You know, like what, I need some guidance on what, what, what are we supposed to do, you know? And they made sure not to ever send another, you know, black employee back out there. They just have to be short staffed or, you know, we'll have to try to rotate it to where it's non-black people going out there to help. But y'all, I didn't, you know, of course I didn't argue with the man. I just, you know, and I'm not saying you have to be like that, but I'm just saying when we're at work, we tend to know how to resolve conflict because our paycheck depends on it. When you're dealing with conflict interpersonally, where it's not something work related, you have to look at it as though your very life depends on it too. And you know, you guys, I've told you before, if you're not, and I know this sounds extreme, but it sounds extreme because a little argument can lead to something very extreme. I've said this before. If you're not willing to quite literally die for whatever it is that you think you so bad it, bad it about, then you, it's not worth arguing about because a simple argument can turn into a deadly situation. You can be arguing about, you know, whatever that don't even seem that deep, but y'all have seen lately people getting shot over they didn't put enough fries in my bag or, you know, all this little crazy stuff that you hear people getting, you know, she didn't cook enough fried chicken, you know, whatever. All these interpersonal things where people are getting shot and killed over that when you hear about it on the news, it seems so minor. But again, you can't, this is just not a culture where you can just pop up off, at, 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 off the mouth at everybody. And so to me, instead of saying for everybody, to me, you don't pop off at the mouth with anybody because you think you're crazy you there's always somebody crazier you know what I mean and that's that's the thing people don't seem to understand 
you know, like you might be willing to fight and end up in handcuffs behind a situation. The other person might feel like they have nothing to live for and they're quite literally willing to die about the situation. Like they don't care. Like, you know, I, I told you guys too about a, a story where I think Kev on stage shared this video long ago with this black woman, you know, batty, batty, and rowdy, rowdy, thinks she about that life, uh, kind of had a, maybe a fender bender or almost with a, a black guy driving a truck. And she got out the car all swollen up in the chest, thinking she was gonna talk crazy to him. And somebody recorded whatever was going on. So she jumped out the car talking crazy to him, you know, cause he cut her off or he made some kind of bad turn or something. And he was a big buck, you know, and he said, he basically told her, I just got out the penitentiary for murder and I have no problem with going back. And baby, she went from, uh, you know, Sharkeisha that could fight anybody to, I I'm gonna just go ahead and get back in my car. You know, it's like, you think you're about that life, but baby, you it's always somebody that's willing to die for something you're not willing to die for. You know, you, you might got kids you care about or your life that you care about. And there's some people out there that feel like they got nothing to lose, you know? So it's like, you don't know the difference. A person might look completely sane to you and look completely normal to you and you don't know what you're dealing with. You don't know what kind of crazy you're dealing with. So to me, it's not worth arguing with people about anything ever. It's just not. And again, I know I say that it's easier to say that it's um, easier said than done because I literally just like let myself get goaded into an argument just unnecessarily. You know, the, the, the me that I want to be would say, Kat, you should've just got your keys and left, you know? But the me that I was, it's just like, girl, okay, fine, you wanna do this, let's do this, you know what I mean? So it's like, we're always aspiring to be better people, you know what I mean? But it, it, y'all, it's just not worth arguing about, you know? I, I hear stories of people going up to the school, uh, you know, and they do this kind of stuff on the radio all the time. They'll pretend like they're, you know, the school calling about somebody's child. And the way these parents talk to teachers, it, you know, I it, I just couldn't imagine talking to someone who was educating my child. Like I, I couldn't imagine. And I and again, I don't have any children, you know. But it's just in my days, teachers were respected. I, like I wish I would talk to somebody spending six to eight hours a day with my child like that. And to me, it's, it's a living witness that when the pandemic happened, these people couldn't wait for their kids to go back to school. You know, they couldn't wait for their kids to go back, let somebody else deal with them. They want, they feel like they should have been being paid to teach their own kids, you know? And it's just like, baby, what do you think teachers are doing all day? You think your little uh, Shaniqua and your little Tyrone are being a little anxious while they're in class? No, honey. And it's ridiculous you gotta record these little kids for their parents to believe you know, what you trying to tell them. Like, I have other things to do than to make up stuff about your child's behavior, you know, like. So, remember what I told you guys about conflict resolution, especially in Blackistan, that, you know, kids are ba kids were basically expo exposed to violence. That's what they're gonna use to resolve conflict is violence. I remember telling you that, I don't know. Yeah, I think I've shared with you guys this before, but like, when I was going to college, my best friend from undergrad, she didn't get spanked as an adult. I mean, as a child. And when we, you know, we're in school, I, I, let's see, we started school when I was 17. So from 17 to 21, you know, we got to know each other. And when I found out she'd never been spanked before, to me, that seemed abnormal. I didn't know any black kids that I knew of that didn't get spanked, that didn't get whoopings. I'm just like, what? You didn't get whoopings? And I, you know, when I would ask her, well, how did you get disciplined? And she would just be talked to, you know, she didn't get whoopings. And it was like, I think once my mom had read a parenting book, I didn't get whoopings that much. You know, I started getting, I got to do essays and uh, timed out and all that kind of stuff, which don't get me wrong, I was very grateful for. It. But when my mom started learning other ways to parent me, she did. Now, let's not say she always stuck with them, you know. I remember the day I got kicked out when I was 17, baby. It was very much a beat down. And that, it wasn't no, you know, whooping. It was like a, a beat down, like I was somebody in the streets. You know what I mean? Like, but I also knew, know me and my mouth. And I, you know, 
I, I was definitely not staying in a child's place at that age, you know, like, oh, when I get, when I graduate from college, I'm a, I'm a take, you know, basically, I'm a, I'm a do this and I'm, y'all know how it is when people think they grown and I definitely thought I was grown because I was 17 and going off to school and I'm not justifying the behavior either way for either one of us, but I'm just saying when kids are raised and they're talked to, to resolve, you know, some problematical behavior, that's what they repeat. And I remember she and I definitely, we, you know, we were best friends, but our friendship has been tested. You know, she said that to me before, like, you know, she has friends, but their friendship has never been tested like ours has. She's like, basically we've been through the fire together, you know, and it's like the, the way we resolve conflict or the way we had to learn how to resolve conflict, you know, just coming from different backgrounds, like, I come, I remember the first time we like really got into it and I was yelling and blah, blah, blah. And she was like very, in a very modest voice was like, don't yell at me, you know, that just like, that's not necessary. And I'm, you know, just from a different background where it's gonna be some yelling and some cussing and some throwing stuff and whatever. And she just is, you know, very different. And, and I remember when I was growing up or when I was, you know, in college, and I started being exposed to these black kids that weren't beat at all and didn't, never got a whooping and didn't believe in whooping kids and whatever. And I just thought, child, them, these kids ain't gonna turn out right. They, they ain't never been disciplined. They ain't gonna turn out right. And of course they all turned out right. And, and I did, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like, and I told you guys, even when I see that now, when I see black kids that aren't disciplined, and to me, they look a little too madly with their parents, say stuff to their parents I would never say or could never have said, you know, and of course time, time will tell you know what happens but it's just a, a different there's a different way to do things you know and I wish that we as a people would learn how to do those things now I think those of us who are educated and have been exposed to different cultures yeah you know but unfortunately the ones who learn violence and resolve conflict with violence um are usually not the ones that are gonna go off to college or whose parents have been off to college, you know? When you hear about a Tyrone shooting somebody cause they didn't give, you know, his mama enough French fries or whatever, you can rest assured that, that Tyrone and his mama probably ain't been in nobody's, you know, course learning about nothing, you know? So, you know, it's kind of like each one teach one. And, you know, it's like, it's, it's unrealistic to think every you know, everyone in Blackistan is gonna go to school or have the same values, see things the same way, resolve conflict the same way. But I think if you make it maybe socially unacceptable to resolve conflict with violence, um, that it, you know, that that might have more of an effect. The same way nowadays, like being a fan of R. Kelly or whatever, is like not socially acceptable. But y'all remember just maybe 10 years ago, people still going to R. Kelly concerts. So I think there are some things we have to give give a certain stigma for people not to, you know, do them. Whereas, it, you know, to me, resolving conflict violently, cussing out people, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes you have to tell people if they weren't raised any better, if they haven't learned better, hey, that's that's not the way to be. That That's not cute, you know. I know you're used to resolving conflict that way, but it, it, it's not classy, it's not cute, it's not the way to be. Um, you know, and that it, it just really is better to walk away from stuff. You know, I, I just always tell people, is it worth your life? And I know that sounds dramatic, but it, it's, it's just never worth your life. And you never know if the person that you're talking crazy to it's crazier than you. <laughs> you just don't know. You think you know, but I'm telling you, I buried plenty of body where they they thought they was about their life and they met somebody who really was and found out they weren't, you know. So anyway, I'm at the office, y'all. I will holler at y'all later. Y'all be easy, like, share, and subscribe. Bye.